Got it. Please. Uh, hi, I'm Monique, and this is Peter. And we thought it might be a good idea to join together for the educational meeting uh, and talk a bit about what's going on, on in the area of education. So um, I'm going to talk a bit about what I've been doing. Um, I think two years ago I started B3D 101, um, a website with uh, tutorials for, for young students. I'm not allowed to call them kids anymore, age 10 plus. Uh, and um, basically it came from the idea that um, currently in the Netherlands there is a lot of intention for teaching kids technology, programming. And a lot of these initiatives were asking me, hey Monique, do you have something with Blender? Because all the kids are asking for Blender. And my first thing was, why are these kids asking for Blender? They're 10, 11, 12. Well, um, it seems that they are. So um, I created my first tutorial, put it online, and more people started asking, hey, can I, we want them as well. That's why I said, okay, I'm not gonna email it around, I'm gonna put it on a website online. And um, that worked. So many people said, hey, this is cool. Do you have more? It's like, do I have more? Um, and that's basically when I sent an email out to the BF Education emailing list. That's how I uh, met uh, Peter who said, hey, we're doing the same in the UK. And I got um, somebody in Taiwan responding like, hey, I'm doing the same in Taiwan. And sort of a community started with people creating tutorials. Peter from, uh, everybody knows Peter, <laughs> from Blender Kuska also joined. So we started forming a community, creating tutorials for young students, age 10 plus. And um, I don't know, Ton is doing this, this, this to me, so I was like, I have no idea what he's doing. Okay, um, and this is basically how we started. So I started doing code events uh, last year and basically asking the kids, okay, you're 10 years old. Well, what am I saying? You're nine. I got kids from eight years old. It's like, Blender is too difficult for you. No. Okay, I want to learn. I was like, okay, okay, fine. So I asked the kids, how did you come to Blender? So either they had a father or a mother that was doing Blender, and they got motivated and wanted to learn Blender so that they could be better than their parents. That was one reason. Uh, the other reason, and strangely, um, most of them were coming from the gaming communities. It seems that Blender is very popular in gaming communities, especially Unity communities, and Blender is mentioned a lot. So many kids picked up Blender from their gaming communities and wanted to learn Blender. And once they've learned Blender, they did some of our tutorials, especially the girls, they came back, oh, this is cool, because I used to be nobody in my community, and now I'm so cool in my community, this is really cool. Um, so this kind of has been happening in the Netherlands. So last year I did a lot of tutorials, and I said, okay, we need to go more into schools. Um, but even in the Netherlands, we have a lot of bureaucracy, uh, a lot of things happening. So how do you get into the Dutch schools? Well, you kind of don't. Um, the only way I found to get into the, the Dutch schools, if I can get the crazy computer science teachers who are also crazy about Blender and 3D, who are really willing to teach this. And there are some of them. So I met this teacher at a conference and I said, okay, we need to do this. So uh, what I've been doing this year, basically, um, working on more tutorials, because that's the next thing they ask. I want more tutorials. I want to do VR. It's like, VR, come on. Yes, we want to do virtual reality. Yes, we want to do a bit more advanced modeling. So they've been asking for those kind of things. We've been working on a few of those tutorials, attended a few of those teachers' conferences, where we met those teachers, and they're really crazy, and they're starting to do Blender at their schools. Challenge, I, I really came up there, or I ran into um, doing this. I had a lot of teachers asking me, how do I sell this to my school? I need hours for this. Uh, I need a budget for this. Do you have something 
um, that can tell me how I can get the budget and the hours for my school. And this is something, uh, I'm not sure what your experiences are, but this is something I, I really ran into that teacher asking me how they could sell uh, doing blended tutorials at their school. Although they want to, they do see the necessity of it, but it's apparently difficult to sell it to a uh, head of a school, yeah. that this is important for kids. As long as you can show that uh, there is a lot of opportunity in the market and yeah. there is a market gap. So any school will take it up uh, if there is a market gap. So there needs to be analysis and a report which should be supporting that. And then one can take it to the school saying, okay, there's a major market gap. Yeah. And if, if the skills are provided to the students, they will get the job easily. Yeah. And that, that's, that's the way we can true. sell it. It's true. And... Um, to be honest, this is an ongoing discussion in the Netherlands, um, whether kids should have technical skills, etc. And this is currently uh, a discussion that's uh, going on. Uh, what we also picked up for B3 101 uh, is translation. So last year we started with Dutch and English, and this year we also have uh, Latin, Spanish, and uh, Portuguese. Yes, Latin, Spanish, South America. <laughs> And uh, we also have German. Um, and we see quite some requests coming from uh, indeed uh, Portuguese countries and from uh, Spanish speakers uh, as well. And, and Germany uh, also. Um, so we worked on making the tutorials available in multiple languages um, so that they become available for kids, uh, young students in those uh, in, in different countries where English is not the mother tongue. Uh, for instance, for Dutch kids, um, one of the biggest complaints I had is they want to know Blender, they go online, everything is in English, and they can't understand what's being, being told, what's being explained there. So having it in their own language at least uh, reduces the language barrier uh, in this sense. Um, one thing we also talked about uh, last year was the roadmap. Um, we had a Blender B3D1 meeting here and we talked about a roadmap and um, I think the discussion went in all directions uh, and we're still discussing <laughs> who the good roadmap is. But this is something that schools are looking into. Uh, like I said, we started with events and now we're trying to move more into schools so you could see schools asking back, okay, what is the roadmap? Um, I'm currently working with uh, a coder class. Um, sorry, I can finish. That's me, hello. Yeah. Yes, it is. University of Roehampton. Google, Google, yeah. Uni, is that in the UK or America? That's in the UK. That's South in the West UK. Can you do that in yeah. Oh. Use the mic. Oh, sorry, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to talk about that a bit in a second. Yeah. And uh, so the roadmap, that's something that's constantly being asked for. And like I said, we're moving more into school curricula. In the Netherlands, we have a computer science curricula. And I'm currently working together with a few schools uh, to see how Blender fits in the curricula. And basically, the conclusion was it fits well. Uh, we just need to know how to sell it to the government and to the ministry. And, um, and that's currently what we're working on. Uh, we've been also working on a bit of funding. I think Peter can tell a bit more mm. about that. So 3D animation seems to be quite, well, quite popular at the moment with funders. We've, we've been quite successful with securing some funding uh, for school-aged research, school-aged um, development of resources. And actually, we've, we've now been awarded two Google funds in the last couple of years to develop resources to teach children. And as you can see there, um, I work at the University of Roehampton. I also run an organization called 3DAMI. And um, we've got funding twice now to develop resources with the current focus on a, uh, on a learning platform, which we're going to talk a little bit about in a second. Um, though we ha and also, we've had some funding um, in for teacher training and creating schemes of work. And, you know, talking about the case for teaching this in schools, well, unless there's a curriculum for it, um, British schools aren't very interested in it, not even the... Um, 
I suppose, the, the economic argument, because it, if it's not attached to results, it's not attached to league tables, then I'm not going to teach it. So just creating resources which will allow a school to deliver it as part of their curriculum. Um, that seems to be quite useful. And we've been doing a bit of teacher training, because we can go into as many schools as we want to, and we are doing lots of work like that at the moment, but there's only two of us. So the more teachers we can train to deliver this, the better. So we, we've got a bit of funding at the moment, which we are going uh, to teach training providers, we are going to local groups of teachers, the meeting at school network and we're working with them to train teachers to deliver this in mainly after school clubs at the moment it's not being hugely successful in schools after schools clubs much better and I'm also currently working on engaging some other universities in terms of getting their students to go into the local communities to go and teach this as well um, uh, because the students want to do this but we do have a problem here in terms of people's skill to do it. If you want to go and teach uh, the basics of Python, anybody who's got any kind of vague programming background can do that quite easily. But if you want to teach the basics of 3D animation, you need to have a bit of knowledge here, which means we do need more work put into training students and teachers to go and deliver it in schools. Uh, then we've had a couple of other successes. I don't know if any of you are aware there's a new magazine produced by the Raspberry Pi Foundation called Hello World. Uh, we featured in that in their first edition. So we had tutorials on how to make a little snowman. That was in the very first edition of the Hello World magazine. Um, we worked on that. Um, and we're talking at the moment with the Raspberry Pi Foundation and Co Club potentially about getting them not just to deliver Python and JavaScript and, and assembly code and all the sort of things they're doing with Code Club, um, because it's about code, but also to be doing some work in terms of 3D animation. So trying to get Blender into the delivery of Code Club. And Code Club in the UK, um, they're looking, I think at the moment, about 500 uh, different clubs in secondary schools. And there's, there's more of these things happening around the world. You've got Coded Dojus. It, we're, we're trying to get in with that at the moment. That's, that's very early stages. We're in negotiations to see if we can make that happen. But obviously, the more people who do this, then the more likely they are to come and study at, at university and to make informed choices about studying at, at university. Um, it's, it's, so, uh, sorry for interrupting you. Um, are you guys aware that currently Google, the Raspberry Pi Foundation and Facebook are uh, setting up platforms to uh, teach uh, young students about technology? Uh, you have code.org, uh, I think Khan Academy is also jumping into it. Um, uh, currently the Raspberry Pi Foundation as well. They acquired the CoderDoyo, which was an independent organization, but worldwide, also in the Netherlands. But they, the Raspberry Pi Foundation acquired them. Um, so th there is something going on there, and there is a lot of attention. Um, and that's why the, our B2D 101 website, with some of our tutorials, uh, they're so interested in them. Because yeah. we're moving more to virtual reality, augmented reality, exactly. and you've got these firms selling this stuff. So children get to use it, they get to be consumers, but we're trying to make them creators, which of course, if you're in education, that's what you're trying to do, get people to create things, not just to consume it. Um, and then very briefly at the end, um, I've been here before talking about another organization that I, that I run, which is this 3D AMI. We, we get groups of, um, it was this year, 11 to 18 year olds making uh, two minute films, so two minute short films, going through the whole process with their own render farms and several hundred thousand million pounds worth of hardware to, to make this happen. Um, and we've been getting a bit more funding behind that as well. Um, that's, that's been growing in the UK. Um, but we, uh, we're struggling, as I'm sure many of you are, with just securing funding to make these things happen. Now, we've got one more slide on this, but we, looking at the time, we want to give you a bit of time in this session to talk about where you're coming from, because we're talking very much at a pre-university level here in terms of most of our work. And there are many people in here um, from university level, and we want to give you the opportunity to, to meet similar people um, doing similar jobs and talk about what works and what doesn't work for you. Um, but we're just going to very quickly skip on to this learning platform, which Monique's kind of touched on already. Um, and I'll just do a quick introduction, if you don't mind. So, yeah, sure. Yeah. This is the, the, the forum that's the Google, this the Google sponsoring we received. And basically, Google said, OK, um, you have a wonderful platform with a lot of teaching material. Please continue. Go on. Uh, but you have to create a community as well. Uh, you need to um, show what kids are creating. Um, and the thing is that this aligns with a discussion that's currently also going on in the Netherlands, uh, which is uh, kids having a portfolio. Um, one of the, the problems that schools uh, came up with said, okay, kids, they, do, they create a lot of things at schools, but um, if they do something like Blender, when they leave the school, um, I can't give it to them. 
especially schools in the Netherlands, they just maybe keep the documents for six months, maybe sometimes a year, and then it's gone. So they were also asking for a platform where students can upload their work and which would stay there for years so that uh, after years a student can keep on working on his profile but that the work at least would be there. And this aligns with the Google uh, funding we received for creating a forum where students can start creating a portfolio. And if any of you are familiar with the Scratch website, it's an online learning community uh, around basic computer programming. We're trying to create something very similar for 3D animation. So we're going to get students around the world uploading work, but more importantly, seeing each other's work, being able to download each other's work. It's not just them looking at the finished movie or the finished image. They can download the model. They can see how the model is made. They can look at the topology. They can see how the textures were put together. Um, them looking at downloading, remixing other people's work, and that's really fundamental to, to putting this community together, or so we think. We, we are in the process of building this right now. Um, and to talk about teacher resources, we want to make it as easy as possible for after-school clubs or teachers to deliver, um, to deliver sessions. So there will be teaching resources on here, so teachers can use this as part of their delivery of, um, of a course in their school or after school. Okay. Sure. Shall we? Yeah. Yeah. So next slide. That, um, so we set this up only a couple of weeks ago um, because we think it's important to get educators talking together. We've discussed a lot today about what we're doing. Um, and I say we have a very, uh, very narrow focus in the sense that it's, it's pre-university. And many of you are in other areas of, of education. And um, we just want to really um, get you just find out a bit more about what people do in the community. So we've got 10 minutes left, and I said two minutes per person. That seems a little bit long, actually. Um, so we might even restrict you just to, if you want to introduce yourself, what you're doing, and um, take a minute to do that, then we'll pass around and, and try and just get to know each other a little bit better. Then we're going to retire upstairs, where we're going to have a further discussion if you want to continue any of the discussion that we've had in here today. So if anyone wants to introduce themselves, I'm going to give you one minute to do so, to describe yourself, where you're from, um, how you're working, and um, yeah, uh, I'm talking too long myself. I know. I'll pass it to you. Okay. Hi, I am Christoph. I am a teacher for over, uh, after school teacher for Blender for after seven years. I teach uh, kids at the age of 10 till, well, we are pressed off. And uh, I got very, very great experience and likely would share them with you. Hi. Hi, my name is Kieran Rose. I'm from London in England. I run a thing called Frog Design Thinking and Tinkering Foundation where we literally let the kids design they can muck about with wood, they can muck about with metal, they design, they do interactive design, they basically, they come along, we get a group of them together, they can literally create what they want and the mentors behind the back literally just guide them along and if we need any more help we look for sources which can actually come in and lecture and help. And my background, personally, I've initially trained as a graphic designer, I have a master's in interactive digital media and I'm also currently alongside Frog doing a PhD in cognitive creativity. Although it's a bit autodidactic because I'm trying to find a university that will actually do it. So, there you go. Anybody want to uh, Okay, my name is uh, David Guerry. I'm from France, France. And uh, I'm uh, partly a teacher, but uh, in university and high school and the like. Uh, and uh, I would like to say that in France we have not only school, but we have only public libraries. Actually, there are not only books in these libraries, so we call them mediatheque. But uh, uh, people, and especially kids, have the opportunity to spend uh, a few days in workshops doing stop motion and the like. And uh, it's really interesting also to have uh, such, uh, such way to, to, to learn and have uh, in online content to share with them. Yeah, that's a good idea, maybe, maybe. Okay, my name's Pete from Germany, middle of Germany. I teach Blender. I have the pretty crazy idea of bringing Blender into 3,000 schools. And you just gave me the idea to make a dozen or more one-minute videos of how Blender 3D 
can tie into each class. So one for physics, one for math, one for biology, one for sports, one for... Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'm Mathieu Dupont de Dinchin. I'm a teacher. I've been teaching in a school of architecture and now in university in communication uh, section. And I founded the Fab Lab too, a makerspace where I do some activities with children. And uh, to jump on what he said about the Mediatek, uh, we have a lot of contenders for children. A lot of people, they do teaching with uh, Minecraft. For example, uh, they do teaching with the Autodesk free. Okay, no, it's not falling. The Autodesk free softwares, and uh, and yes, I think there is space for Blender for that. But it's yeah. So that something to talk about. Yeah. It would be nice to talk about how to. Uh, it would be nice to talk about how to we can uh, get Blender and the Blender tutorials also in the the MediaTek, for instance. Um, and what would be necessary for that? Very cool. Anyone else? Okay, yeah. uh, Andre from uh, Amsterdam area. I'm teaching at two high schools here in Amsterdam nowadays. Used to be a scientist, and uh, I'm teaching physics, not uh, Blender. But uh, I just bought a 3D printer for my school, and we're going to use it in some way or another. So with Blender. And you're doing this at the Dutch high school? Yeah. Which one? Uh, two high schools. One is in Amsterdam North. Uh, Damstede and the other one is Vincent School here in uh, the Haarlemmerstraat. So, so uh, you're welcome to, to visit. Including, including yeah. Hi, my name is Alex Chamberlain from Dixie State University in Southern Utah. You can tell by my accent and my hat that I'm a Yank. And uh, I've switched our, uh, I teach the 3D modeling and the 3D animation classes at our university and I've switched them from Maya to Blender in the last couple of years. Really enjoyed it, but I'm also interested in just kind of how other people are teaching it and, and just kind of learning from a group like this. So I'm glad we're meeting here. Ah, yes, I'm uh, Matthias Skulver from Sweden. Uh, I teach uh, art and history animation at the uh, school of 16 to 18 years old, gymnasium level. Uh, yes, in Sweden. In Sweden. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, 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 not all with Blender, I just teach history. <laughs> but, but animation, uh, visualization. History, animation with the Blender. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can do great jobs with Blender. I'm, I'm his colleague, so I, we work together. So. Thank you. Yes. Uh, hi to everybody. I am Gianluca Vita. I am teach at the university in Milan at the Politecnico University of Architecture, and uh, two at the Accademia di Belle Arti di Brera. It's, it's different, it's ever a kind of university, but more uh, dedicated to art and not to architecture. And then I teach to professionals and so architects to use Blender. And in all these architect in uh, all these school I try and I work is five, six years, I teach uh, Blender. In, in different ways, obviously, it's different for an architect, for an artist, for a professional. But in all the school, the problem is ever the same, that my wish uh, is a beginner's interface. You know? When you open Blender, it's like to enter in a Boeing 747. You know? It's so many. And so the people look it and close it. So um, people. I really recommend take a look at what we've been putting together. So ah, the, yes, yes, yeah, sir. Okay, tutorials okay. are between three and five minutes long, and they really focus on creating things rather than a 20-minute video about how the interface works. So we've got stuff focused on school children, but it also works with adults. We find that adults find it a nice way of introducing themselves, something which looks incredibly complex at first, but is actually yes, yes. quite easy. So anybody else? Go ahead, Youngest person in the room, potentially. 
Do you want to just introduce, well, can we, you introduce yourself and I'll pass, pass uh, this over. You. Okay, uh, to, Tobias uh, from Germany. I'm teaching uh, Blender to bachelor science students in computer science. Um, and uh, I also want to start to teach Blender to younger uh, students, pupils. And um, I would like to know when Blender 101 is uh, planned to, to get ready, to, to be ready. Okay, so I'm Aku, I'm from Finland, and I uh, study, uh, like, uh, on my own, I learned these. I've used Blender for a couple of years now, and um, it's pretty cool. Do, do you mind me... <laughs> do you mind me asking how old you are? Uh, I'm 14. Fantastic. Um, okay, so we're coming up to the end of this session. You've got a feel for who everyone is, but before we go, and we say we're going to go upstairs, there's a meeting room upstairs, we're going to continue this conversation. Can I just have a quick show of hands? Who's working at university level at the moment with Blender? University. Who's in university, teaching in university? So we've got quite a, a bunch of you. You might want to have a look around. Just quick again. You know, who are these people? You might want to go and introduce yourselves to them. Um, and who's working at pre-university? So uh, anything beneath university. So there's, there's a few of us here too. <laughs> Um, okay, well, as I say, we put this into the, um, into the schedule a couple of weeks ago. We want to make this a thing that happens every year. We want to keep having this meeting because we can learn from each other. We can learn an awful lot from each other. Um, so we're going to continue the conversation, but hopefully continue the conversation for the rest of this weekend. And, um, and through, we've got a Slack group, we've got the mailing list. We, we do need to keep in contact because Blender needs to be in more universities because it's, it's free and it's easy and it's great, and as we all know. Anyway, thank you for that. Um, we're going to move upstairs now, um, and hopefully we'll see.